How is it possible that uh, over 70% of the world today is teetering on uh, dictatorship that is advancing globally? This is coming from the Institute of Democracy issued by the University of Gothenburg. The major reason could be that there is a non-human force that is using the Chinese model and it's on the cusp of installing itself all over the earth and affecting and influencing and running the lives to the T of every human being ever to be born again on the earth. If this non-human force is not prevented and stopped, the next generations will be automatons, zombies, and controlled. They use obsessive compulsive behavior, day-to-day -day rituals and sacrifices in wars and disasters and experiments. They are very cold-blooded, murderers and genocidal. They have a, an appetite for enslavement, desire for control, running people's lives, fueled by anger and emotions and they fear and they are also very power hungry and they desire to own anything and everything that they find on the earth we call it a reptilian religion we want to look at reptilian religions and the definition of uh, what we call the reptilian religions is that they are obsessed with sacrifices rituals of other entities not of themselves and sometimes of themselves so we suggest that the current trend towards autocratic dictatorship and its viral behavior for total obsession in bending human will and forcing human will and forcing human beings to behave in a certain unnatural order is due to reptilian religions that began at the dawn of creation. We want to understand this and we want to go through and say is the reptilian religion one of the nefarious negative forces destroying human will? And about to engulf the whole planet and destroy human consciousness, free will, and potential. Consider the following. We want to define certain terms, and there is a lot of academic camouflaging going on, and uh, timelines that have been lost and smudged over, and the snake religions that are permeating all the earth, and have permeated all the earth, and we have a very interesting summary. Let's define some terms. What is a reptile? A reptile is one of the major groups of alligators, crocodiles, turtles, lizards, and the snakes. All reptiles are cold-blooded, which is why they warm themselves in the sun. All reptiles are vertebrates and animals with backbones. Reptilian then is a term relating to or characteristic of reptiles. Easily, you can understand it by knowing totems so it is an adjective that is used for a behavior which is reptilian which is reptile cold-blooded saurian ophidian crocodilian polyclothemic reptiloid reptiloform reptent repemp unpleasant and distasteful such characters are running at the world you have heard of conspiracy theories and a lot of castigation of conspiracy theories. What is a conspiracy? A conspiracy is a secret plan by a group of entities to do something unlawful or harmful. Are there such groups? Yes, there are so many groups like that. What is a theory? A theory is a careful, thought-out explanation for observations of the natural world that has been constructed using the scientific method and which brings together many facts and hypotheses. Therefore, our answer to the question are there worldwide think tanks that secretly lobby governments and other institutions to enact policies that advance their secretive goals. Yes. So, conspiracy theories, which are often treated dismissively as ravings of deranged paroniacs, they are by nature what is happening on earth today you have to think and go deeper let's look at academic camouflage distinguished scientists today have thrown doubt on the other complex aspect of the triune brain they now say they no longer think humans have a reptilian brain or something like that but that evolution only modify existing structures so they reinterpret everything as natural behavior Yet despite that, our so-called advancement or civilization is full of shocking violence, genocide, and the best snake 
reptilian animal type behavior that dominates it. Why? Because in their explanation, these experts, they dismiss the spiritual dimension from which entities, hybrids, reptilian type of humans or species have percolated into the earth and through systems like religions have influenced the behavior and the pattern and the spirit of humanity. So let's look at timelines because we need to, really, to define religion first and to go on to define the oldest religion and to prove that the oldest religion is actually battling against a reptilian type of religion. A religion is the worship and the belief of a supernatural controlling power, especially a personal deity or god or gods, and it follows set rituals and practices. The meaning of religion, therefore, and its etymology is to tie, to lock, to connect, to bind, and to connect. Thus, through faith, belief, divine service, worship, creed, teaching, doctrine, theology, sect, cult, religious group, religious leader, faith, community, church, or denomination, you become connected or linked or owned by a divinity. That's all that is to do with religion as well as spirituality. So, do you belong to the oldest religion? If so, is it free from the religions of the reptilians? We want to find the answer to that by knowing which is the oldest religion. The oldest religion, according to Damien Mary Athelhop, is animism, which is 100,000 years ago. All the other ones are not less than 5,000 years BCE. So we will go and uh, prove that Hinduism is 3,000 years, Judaism is 1,800 years, Buddhism is 483 years, Christianity is about 2,000 years ago, Islam is came uh, 632 after death, and uh, Sikhism is just 1469. So these are young religions that came suddenly after a huge gulf of activity. So Let's look at, at them as snake religions, but we want to first and foremost point out the standard and oldest snake religion at the moment, which is this 70,000 year old caved stone snake and in the mountains of the divinities, the ancient architects of peaceful, no need to convert others type of religion. And it is in Botswana, in Southern Africa. You can go to this YouTube and watch the whole video. Just Across to the north uh, east of Botswana, there is the Kasambabeza River, and also the Nyami Nyami, which is the snake. Same. So you see, that is where all these things are connected. So there is a dual aspect of the reptilian religion. There is the good aspect and the evil aspect. And in ancient times, the good aspect dominated. But eventually, the evil aspect has come on board and taken over. You can see here clearly that Runyute is the goddess of money and wealth being worshipped by an ancient African. And this is Apopaipa, who is the evil one, the evil force. And the Apopaipa is being slaughtered. That's why you have to keep cats and understand what they do in your life. So... The serpent god Abu Piper, who is regarded as the enemy of order or Maati or Ubuntu is seen here and shown here. is god of disorder. Then we know that the reptilian religion, the original, the serpentine symbology represented good and evil, blessings and cursings, life and death, wisdom and ignorance, freedom and bondage, chaos and order. They are great lessons you need to learn from that. That you have got the power and you have got the authority to vanquish any, either the good aspect or the evil aspect. You can slay the serpent and continue to slay it until the day you leave the earth. You have got that power. So as we consider these other snake religions, let us look at their timelines and they prove that they are very young religions that came yesterday. So we go to the serpent religion that you find in the Bible or in the Torah. It was borrowed from ancient Kamit because the Hebrew word re rendered serpent in Genesis 3, 1 is Nakash from the root Nakash to shine. And it means the shining one. 
And this shining one is a human being, is not a snake. This is the shining one with Jirahuti, the bringer of wisdom. There is a secret and a secret gospel called the testimony of truth that represents the serpent who tempted Adam and Eve as benevolent and the God who punished them is a manipulative, jealous God. He says he's a God of jealousy anyway. So when you look at the copies of original reptilian religions, you find that they tell you a lot of Johnny came late philosophies that brings a lot of negativity. So he says uh, a snake was hanged by Moses in serpent, so too Jesus. So Christians do not know that they are worshipping this serpent, which came from ancient Hamid. And it came 1,400 years BCE. And we have an old one, 70,000 years BCE. All these other ones came, Johnny came late. So the serpent shows the way to the hidden things, shows wisdom, shows understanding, shows interdimensional awareness inside of your body, inside of you, not elsewhere. So some positive depictions that in include the serpent are the dragon in China, which is symbolized as life and fertility. And also in ancient Hamid, the serpent represented the life and the renewal with its ability to shed its skin and reveal new life or new one. But the Chinese dragon is very, very young. It came 2000 years BCE, while its hours is 70,000 BCE. Far, far much older. There is a purpose and a reason why we are highlighting this this is where you have to go and throw away in the garbage bin all these the new ones that came yesterday. Now, when you look at the reptilians in uh, Southern America and uh, the snake or reptilian religions, for those unfamiliar with the reptilians, because they disguise themselves through many means, which includes ancient gods, like in ancient uh, Greece, and uh, they find a prime opportunity to play as gods or god. Now, in Mexico, there is also the timeline, which is 1500 BCE, and ours is already 70,000 BCE. All the other religions that came after these 70,000 years and the 12,000 BCE are dominated by the negative aspect of this reptilian or serpent religion. It actually represents your kundalini, your power inside you, right inside your body. So, in Mexico, religion said, uh, or Cholula, it is the special period that was filled with human sacrifice and atrocious behavior that was beyond what the original animistic belief system taught. So, we go to India, where we've got the Naga. In the Hindu text, there are tales of Krishna who sat atop a coiled serpent beneath the banyan tree and deliver the forbidden knowledge of the gods to humans. Very correct. Very true. But it started 3000 BCE to 1500 BCE and there's already an old one, 70,000 year old sacred snake serpent in Africa, Southern Africa, in Botswana. We go to Sume. A lot of say the Anunnaki, a lot of said Enki and Enlil. A lot of God come up out saying this is where civilization started. But here's the timeline. They give you 3,500. Some they give 5,000. But they can't go beyond 70,000. They are not anywhere near. They don't go beyond uh, 10,000 years BCE. There is also this man in God, Ningishizida, who is portrayed as a serpent with the head of a man or an eagle. Or more frequently, as a double-headed serpent coiled into a double helix. And it is the DNA that we know today. And a lot of explanations and teachings have come out of that. But what we need to know and the areas we need to focus is to understand animism, which has no founder, which has no holy book. Its major beliefs are, are is a lot of polytheistic entities. These polytheistic entities are divinities. They are not, they are powers, they are principles of power and authority. They are objects found in nature which have their own spirits. Therefore, there is no need in animism to sacrifice anything in huge quantities you have to sacrifice yourself you have to give yourself and this animism started in africa and in native americas and many many other places where they were melanin dominant human beings all modern behavioral sciences and religions 
miss the duality of our perception and ability because of the reptilian influence that has come to emphasize is fate or evil. Yet we have power through our own free will to unleash our potential as souls. Within each of us lies the potential to activate a personal connection to the superconscious called Urawas in ancient Hamid and Kundalin in Hindu or yoga traditions. Our innate serpent power of spiritual transcendence inhabits the base of the spine in its dormant state. When awakened, it unfolds along the spinal column to the brain. That's the serpent. That's the reptilian that we're talking about. Connecting individual consciousness to the consciousness of the universe enfolded within the dark matter of space melanin dominance. At the root of creativity and spiritual genius across innumerable cultures and civilizations, this intelligent force reveals portrayals that enfold time, space, and the luminous matrix of reality itself. Dr. Edward Bynum, he has a book that we will share in the description that you should read and study. So this is the real and original reptilian religion. We must overstand animism again so as to allow vibration of our bodies as explained by Dr. Bingham here for clear thinking, for controlled feelings and unlimited intuition. Why? Because we go to the original and oldest religion that was founded not 70,000 years ago as we were saying but 4.6 billion years ago. Man Tseng, an ancestor of humanity is believed to have begun life when matter also began. He left his footmark on the rocks when they were still soft. That's where we need to go. Subscribe to our channel, Hamiti Buru Ethics, to learn more. And also send us an email on join at Marifado so that we can share what we think is more critical and important for, overcome, for you to overcome the reptilian religion. This is her manager to people this year by Ellen Prisoner. Say until we meet again, Salami Kathleen, Tenda, Siabonga, Enkos, and Dupe, Sande Sana.